Hello everyone, someone Bart here, or you can call me Sully. Well, as you can see, it's Halloween again, and I'm starting this month off by reviewing a movie that is... interesting. But even with a new animated movie coming out next week, I really felt like wanting to look over the next film of this series, as I have already reviewed the first one two years ago. And so, I'm reviewing the sequel to the live action movie, which I found to be a little better than the previous one. And that would of course be the second film with the same energy as the first, Adam's Family Values. The Adam's family are blessed with the arrival of a new baby boy they named Pubert. But Wednesday and Pugsley were playing with the new lad, yet more in an attempt to rid him. Feeling the kids are becoming too rowdy with the baby, and Gomez wanting Morticia to relax, the parents decide to hire a nanny to look after the kids. And they got Debbie Jelensky as their new nanny. But Debbie is known to be the Black Widow, who married and murdered three rich bachelors while under various identities, and stole their money. And she is after Uncle Fester, who happens to be rich with stocks and bonds. But when Wednesday is suspecting Debbie of taking Fester, Debbie convinces Morticia and Gomez to take the kids to a summer camp called Camp Chippewa, claiming they want to go there. Yet the camp really enforces happiness and friendship, in which the counselors never allow sadness and learning. And all the while, Fester falls in love with Debbie, and even marries her, as Debbie tries to kill Fester and tempts him to never see his family again. If you see my review of the first Adams Family movie, I said it was fine with its good characters and effects, yet has a cliché story. Well, the sequel almost has that, as it's not a full-on repeat of the first film. Okay, yes, it's not an exact repeat, but a couple of areas do carry over from the last film, and I'm not talking about the family behavior, as that's what they are the entire time. There's focus on Uncle Fester and a woman with a cliché that's tied to Fester, and that's really it. The main plot of the movie has a similar outline, yet goes for something different. Except the different part is the murderer stealing one's fortune trope. In this case is Debbie, who is infamously known as the Black Widow, who married and murdered three rich bachelors and left with their riches, all while in disguise. But then again, Debbie might be another fake name and she didn't reveal her real name, even when explaining her origins and other reasons for killing, which is basically wanting something she didn't get, starting with her parents. But then there's focus on Fester again, this time he falls in love with her and marries her, yet he becomes someone he's not by being forced and told by Debbie not to see or speak with his family, which in turn has the family, especially Gomez, going through depression like the first film, yet their baby gets an illness that makes him a human due to Fester not being with the Adams, and Gomez is even dying. So the stakes are raised a little higher than how the first one was, which makes it kind of neat. Even Finn again becomes a helping hand, no pun intended, near the end of it all, while Lurch and maybe Grandma Ma contribute nothing. Yet the one other portion I had a hard time getting through aside from the cliché villain is the summer camp side story. Just the idea of a camp only allowing fun and not allowing depression seems pretty cruel, and it's not even that funny, but hear me out. Sure, it's where they learn friendship and teamwork, but it just feels wrong when they keep the kids in there like a prison, and not really giving much heart to the disabled, and to those who won't let them do what they want. They won't even let the kids make a simple phone call from a booth! Who put this camp together? The counselors should encourage kids to have fun, not force them, but they're too overly happy to allow any kind of comfort or care for the kids. And yes, you could say that is an exaggeration of what summer camp is like for a kid, and that it would represent Wednesday and Pugsley's nightmare, but this seems too ridiculous and unrealistic. And seeing how the camp is named Chippewa, which the film mentions is Indian for orphan, it really makes one feel like an orphan there, even though they have parents. They also put the misbehaved ones in the Harmony Hut, which is filled with posters about world peace and being together, and where Wednesday, Pugsley, and Joe spent a day watching family-friendly content, like Disney films from Bambi, to Little Mermaid, to Snow White. Yet when all the audio is being heard, it's from non-Disney films like Sound of Music, The Brady Bunch, and Annie. Wait a minute, Sound of Music is from Fox, which is now owned by Disney, technically making Sound of Music a Disney film. So did this film predict the future, or is it just a strange coincidence? Yet the last moments of the camp are the best ones, as the misunderstood kids give revenge by destroying a play of the first Thanksgiving, which raises a few questions. First of all, why do a play about Thanksgiving? Isn't it supposed to be summertime? Then again, the first film did open during Christmas and ended on Halloween, yet this one shows Thanksgiving in the summer and ends with Pubert's first birthday. What's next, a new film will cover Easter and Valentine's Day? 
I noticed to have the kids who play as Native Americans to get all rowdy and be like those natives who attack people for trespassing and destroying their land, but it just seems odd to have the revenge this way. Second, Wednesday's playing Pocahontas in the play, who was never around when the first Thanksgiving took place, but if history never mentioned any Native women during that time, then maybe the play should have come up with a fake name and use a well-known one. But then Wednesday's in front of a canoe like Sacagawea, so who knows what's going on. But I will give mention to Pugsley playing the turkey and his two words of eat me, which either sounds like a plea to end his life, or is part of play, or is coincidentally later used in another film from the same director. Regardless, I did like the final scene at camp. And there are other things I do like in this film. I like some of the visuals it has, with some gags getting a chuckle or a small laugh out of me. The effects look good, though having a similar feeling to the first film, but slightly better in one or two areas. I like the couple of lines being said, again some of them giving me a chuckle. I enjoyed the dancing scene between Morticia and Gomez, getting a similar vibe to Gomez and Fester doing the mushka from the first film, and I still like the charm the family has for each other and what the actors bring. So in fairness, it is as enjoyable as the first film, but slightly better. But the two stories don't grab me necessarily, and half of the time is jumbled with extra plot elements. Yet coming up from the first film, I wasn't expecting much. Except knowing what happened from my first viewing and not liking much. And the actors who play their characters did a decent job of what they're given. Angelica Houston plays Morticia Adams. Roel Julia plays Gomez Adams. Christopher Lloyd plays Uncle Fester Adams. Christina Ricci plays Wednesday Adams. Jimmy Workman plays Pugsley Adams. Joan Cusack plays Debbie Jelensky. Carl Strucken plays Lurch. Carol Kane plays Grandma Ma Adams. Christopher Hart's Hand plays Thing. Dana Ivey plays Margaret Alford. David Krumholtz plays Joe Glicker. Caitlin and Christian Hooper plays Pubert Adams. Peter McNichol plays Gary Granger. Christine Baranski plays Becky Martin Granger. Mercedes McNabb plays Amanda Buckman. And Carol Hankins plays Dementia. And while I'm at it, let me go over the cameos too, and they did fine as well. Barry Sonnenfeld plays Mr. Glicker. Julie Heston plays Mrs. Glicker. Nathan Lane plays Police Desk Sergeant. David Hyde Pierce plays Delivery Room Doctor. Peter Graves plays America's Most Disgusting Unsolved Crimes Anchorman. Sam McMurray plays Don Buckman. Harriet Sampson Harris plays Ellen Buckman. And Tony Salou plays George. As a whole, this movie is alright. The characters are fine, the story is okay, and the effects are decent enough. Director Barry Sonnenfeld had made a decent sequel to the first film, which I also found to be fine, but this one's a little better than the previous outing, despite the side story with the summer camp and a cliché character. And even though Fester is another big focus again, it doesn't do too much as there's also the new baby and Wednesday and Pugs at camp. But there are also some good moments, even if it's more chuckles than laughs, many of the payoffs with the characters do work, and the effects are like the first film, though there's more to them. Again, while I'm not big into Adam's family, I'm not sure if the animated one's going to give me a similar or better feeling than the live action ones, I can safely say that I again appreciate these movies for what they are and what they set out to do. And overall, they're okay. So today... This movie we're getting a rating of... Two and a half plus stars. So thank you for joining me. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Support me on Patreon. And tune next time for more of Stalloween.